here to be that example. We out here so you can see our good works. But how many of our people really want to stand up for the Yahweh shot? Right? For Christ, the anointed one. Right? How many people really want to go to war, man? We go to war every week, man. We battle with these spirits, man. Right? We ain't out here for nothing. Go ahead and read what you got. So, 119, verse 142. Bring it out. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness. And thy law is the truth. What the God say? And thy law is the truth. What the God say? And thy law is the truth. truth. We all familiar with the truth shall make you free. But God said his laws is the truth. So if you're not keeping God's laws, you are not walking in the truth. You're walking in darkness, right? There's only two routes you're going to pick, righteousness or darkness. Right. But that decision is up to you, each and every individual. That's just what it is. Uh, How you doing, sister? You believe in God, sister? Can I read the scripture to you? I'm late. I'm All right, sis. All right. What do you got? This is a book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Get up. You know who you are according to the Bible, brother? Who are you? Um, a good question. So I'm gonna like kind of minimize that question. I'm gonna say this is a good answer. A example. Good example. But you want something a little deeper than that? To remember the question: Who are you according to the Bible? Who do God call you? Who do the, the your name that God called you? Call us as a people. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Okay. Numbers one. Or, or the um, the bridegroom. Bridegroom. Okay. Well, you're on the right. You're on the right path with it, but we're gonna give you some understanding, all right? Yes, now, on your father's side, what race would your father be, King? Uh, what race? Um, Hebrew. Well, is the African American, so-called Haitian, Jamaican, Puerto Rican, Dominican? Jewish. Judah. Judas. Judas. No, not Judas. And so he's I so I so-called African American. If I'm not from that continent, yes. Well, what is he in general? What is his race or his nationality? Are you speaking to as far as Jesus or as far as the Father? No. What is your dad? Oh, my dad. Yeah. My physical dad. Oh, oh um, African American. Okay, so that would make you from the tribe of Judah, brother. Right. Absolutely. See that? You from the tribe of Judah. Yes, our oppressors changed our names and they picked color on us. So that they put Negro on us. Thank you for coming. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Now, I want to read why I asked you about your father and how it explains who you are. Because I said, who were you according to the Bible? And I asked about your father. So we're going to go into the Bible and explain why I asked about your father. So go ahead and read. Numbers chapter 1 verse 18. Bring it out. And they assembled all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigree. They declared their what? Their pedigree. Their what? Their, their pedigree. A pedigree is your bloodline, your family tree, where you stem from. Yes. They declared their pedigrees. After their families, by the house of their fathers. By the house of your father, not the mother, your father. So whoever your father would be, that what makes you. Right. See what I'm saying? Because in this world, God is set up so we believe in that we be, be mixed. So we mixed children. No, that's not an identity. You see what I'm saying? Your identity, the roots goes off of the house of your father. So whatever your father is, that makes you. So you are a biblical Israelite from the tribe of Judah. Right. According to the Most High God. He calls us the Judites, brother. That's, right. That's who he calls us. Okay? Now, it's something required of us, and we're going to read that, King. Because you want that relationship. Do you want that relationship with the Most High? I do have it. You have it already. Okay, well, we're going to give you some more clearly understanding. Let's see what God requires us, us being Israelites. Go ahead and read it. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10, verse 12. Yep. And now Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? Now you know who he's talking to, right? Who is he talking to? Israel, right? Go ahead and read again. And now Israel. And now who? And now Israel. And now who? And now Israel. What do the Lord thy God require of thee? So God requires something of us, and he's about to tell us, so go ahead and read. But to fear the Lord thy God. We got to fear the Lord thy God. Because if we fear the Lord, we're going to do what he says. We're right. going to do what the scripture says. See what I'm saying? We're going to re read these commandments and these laws and statutes and apply them to our lives. That's how we truly change. Go ahead and read. To walk in all his ways and to love him. And to what? And to, and to love, love him. And to serve the Lord that, and to serve the Lord that God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. We got to love the Lord with all our heart and with all our soul. Go ahead. 
You know what I mean? I'm with you, brother. I'm with you. Believe me, we get that question and all the time. That's why we become, we are saved by grace through faith. Right. In Jesus Christ. Right. Let's see what Christ said out of his own mouth. Here we go. All right? Yes, this is, now, this is Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17, written in red letters. When the Bible written in red letters, that's the Messiah speaking, correct? So let's see what he says. Go ahead and read. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one drop or one tittle shall not wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So ain't nothing gonna pass from the law until all be fulfilled. Right. Yeah, until heaven and earth pass. Heaven is still up there and we're still on earth. It has not passed away yet. The new heaven and earth has not come. We're gonna read it again. Because I want you to get let it sink in before you respond. Go ahead and read. From the top. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. He ain't come to destroy what the prophet said. He has none. He has not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Fulfill animal sacrifice, the animal sacrificial law. I know where you're going. We don't got to make atonement for our sins. Go ahead. What you got? Where I'm going is to fulfill the law is to fulfill the, the, the prophecies and, the, the, and everything that we couldn't fulfill ourselves. And that's why he lived his perfect life, to die as the perfect life for our sins. On which? Which is why the prophets before... They're, um, hold on, just not fulfill the law, but to just fulfill the law. And to fulfill it is to literally walk that life as a perfect man, and then still, that's where the power comes in, and he dies before us, and that's how he sets us free. And that, him dying, and him walking that perfect life, it's him fulfilling the law. Okay, I'm with you. Now look, it's more on that. He's making it clear. See, we just hear that first part, and stop. We want to expunge on it. You. But you gotta, let's, let's finish it. So read it again from the top for me, y'all. To the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall not wise pass from the law. No, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Till all be fulfilled. So all be fulfilled. All have, but uh, hold up, before you answer, have all been fulfilled, yes. Yeah. That would be him dying. That, that's it. That was the fulfillment of the prophecies before, and that's where the new covenant comes in. You sure about that, brother? 98% oh, least. Okay, it, it had to be fulfilled that the children of Israel will wake up and find out our heritage. That, that prophecy is actually in the, the moment right now. That is true, that is true. You see what I'm saying? That so true. that, we still here, and he's gonna come back and save us. When he's gonna come back and save us, I not be fulfilled. When he fulfilled the law, we that, that's when we're gonna get the law in our Antwerp pot. Right. You see what I'm saying? That law is not in our Antwerp part. We still learning about the law. How about we get the New Testament and give you some clarity on that in the book of Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8? Go, go to read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. By which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahushua Mashiach for all. Read that one more time from the top, Bach, that went over his head. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of the Yahushua Mashiach once for all. Once and for all. Read it again. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 10. By what? By the which will we are sanctified? Now we are sanctified. Through the offering of the body of Yahushua Mashiach. Through the offering of the body of Christ. Through the offering of the body of Christ, we are sanctified now, which means we don't got to take lamb to the Levitical priests Correct. and they make atonement for our sins. Correct. We ain't got to do that. We ain't got to sacrifice no more animals because he became the sacrificial lamb. Correct. You see what I'm saying? So that's what you're talking about. Like I said, we just out here to give our people more understanding. Go ahead and read what I you got. 10 to 10. 8 and 8. Hebrews 8 and 8. I mean Hebrews 8 and 8. So I this is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8. No. Finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. He's going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. You were Israelites from the tribe of Judah. But he said he's going to make a new covenant for all 12 tribes, brother. All 12 tribes. He's going to make a new covenant with us. Go ahead. And with the house of Judah. 
not according to the covenant I had made with the fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I re regarded them not, said the Lord. Because we can't, we have not, we stayed in that covenant that he made with us from the old. You see, we walk around, a lot of our people are not keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments. You see what I'm saying? They say, no, Christ came already, and he took away our sins, so now we can just sin. We, we sanctified. No, because if that was the case, brother, two-thirds of just Israelites would not be getting put to death. But two thirds is going to get put to death because they will not return unto his law, statutes, and commandments. Right. Go ahead and read Romans 9 4. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in, in their mind. He's going to do what? I will put the law in their mind. He's going to do what? I will put the law in their mind. So this is a new covenant when he's going to put the law in our mind, which means it's our heart. We ain't going to come out here. We're going to remember. So if I ask you anything about the law, you're going to automatically say it because it's going to be in your heart. Right. We ain't going to have to need this word right here. That's what I'm saying? Right now. That's what time's up right now, correct? Uh -huh. Listen to it. Listen to it. Read it again from the top. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law into their mind and write them in their hearts. And that will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. So he said he's going to put his laws in our hearts, in our mind. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Could you tell me the Levitical law? No, not the Levitical, the dietary law. What and what can I eat out of the rivers, the oceans, and in the seas with fish? Hold on, give me a second. Could you read that scripture one more time? Go ahead and read it one more time. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 10. And this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. All right. All right. So that, that law is not the law of the Old Testament because that was already abolished. So we, um, so what You're law? still throwing that out, bro. We just touched on that. That is true, but that, that we didn't change the fact that that was already abolished when Jesus Christ died. Right, I'm with you. That's why so, I asked you about yes. what fish can we eat and not eat, brother. Now, what, 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 um, what, how can I say it? What, what, what reference would that be adequate to in today's age being a law and a, okay, he said, what was that, um, he would put the laws and in our hearts, hearts in our minds. Yes, yeah, so that's he said he's gonna make a new covenant with us. Yes, and that would be the covenant of Jesus, correct? That's yeah. when the, the, the make it plain for you, brother, that's when the Lord comes back. When we get what this this is when all this stuff takes place. When we change in the twinkling of an eye, when the dead in Christ shall rise, then right in the too late. Then it'll be too late. That's the, it's a new covenant, brother. This is a future prophecy that has not happened yet. That's why I'm reading it. To let you know that the laws are not done away with. We still gotta keep the laws. Remember, we read in Matthew 5, 17, Christ himself, out of his own mouth, said the law is not done away with. So heaven and earth pass, one jot and one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law, so all be fulfilled. All has all these prophecies have not been fulfilled. We're still here. He has not come to take us and put us in our homeland. Let me, let me get you up to, up to speed. Give me the book of Ezekiel. Uh, but that last scripture that we referred to, as far as putting it on our hearts and minds, that basically, I, in, my, in my opinion, would be the, the, the word of God and everything, like his teachings right. and all of that. That means because there's going to be a day when there are going to be no more Bibles. There are going to be, like as of today, nobody's going to church anymore. Nobody's going to church anymore, but like as a man like me, uh -huh. we, and, and you, I, can, I definitely can see that as, as well, correct. We know it in our hearts and minds because it's going to be a time where there are going to be no more Bibles, but people like us are going to be more expanded, and the horizons are going to be in the horizon expanded and more of a multitude with a heart and mind like us that has, that has the, the scripture and everything written on the tablet of our heart and, and, and in our mind. When we're in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to have the laws in our inward part. Like I said, King, if we had the laws right now, you wouldn't need me to explain it or break this Bible down if you understand it because right. each and every one of our people will have it, so it would be useless for us to come out here because we all will have it, brother. Right. It's a new covenant, a new covenant. But if we're in heaven already, then all we're of not in heaven. We are now. Exactly. But you think all this is going to happen when we're in heaven? When we're in, okay, let me so let, let, let me help you out. That's kind of a. That's kind of a. Can I help you out, brother? Absolutely. I'm listening. Go ahead and read. 
Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 21. And they say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. The Lord will take the children of Israel, all 12 tribes, from amongst the heathen. We're still mingling in the heathen, amongst the heathen. So that prophecy has not happened yet. That has, that's one of the things that has not been fulfilled. We begin from the top. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 21. Yep. And they and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. Whether they will be gone from and will gather them on, on every side. The Lord gonna gather us up on every side, meaning all these different countries. We're gonna he's gonna gather us all up. Go ahead. And bring them into their own land. Oh, now he's gonna give us a land to go to. We still in our land of our enemies. Right. It was once ours, but it's taken over by our enemies, and we don't have it today. So that law has not been fulfilled, brother. When that happens, when that happens, he's going to put his laws in our inward part. Right. They're not in our inward part. That's a new covenant that hasn't happened yet. Go ahead and read. Verse 22, and I will make them one nation. He's going to make what? Make them one, one nation. nation. We're not going to be separate, two separate nations, Jacob and Israel, or the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. We're going to be one nation, brother. Right. That has not happened yet. That, that's not been fulfilled. Remember, he said, until all be fulfilled. So when no wise pass from the law, brother. Now, when he said all be fulfilled, was he talking about uh, the fulfillment right of the right law? Was the fulfillment of the prophecy? He's talking about the fulfillment of the animal sacrifice. That's not, that's not word for word. That's not verbatim. Not verbatim. Okay. But the words I heard was to fulfill the law. Look at Acts chapter 3 and verse 18. You can go, you can go back to that. Yeah, we're going we to make it more clear for you. Okay. That's what we out here for. In the book of Luke 24, 44. Luke 24, 44. Go ahead and read it. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 18. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. Christ so suffered when he has so fulfilled. Now, this, hold on, hold on, let me, let me pause on it. This is before Christ came. But that was already after Christ had died already. So he, that's what he just said. While Christ had already fulfilled. That means that's a past tense. Christ had been fulfilled already. In fact, the book of Acts is also after the crucifixion of Jesus. And that's why he just said the word that he just used was had, which was past tense. Okay, let's read it again. Which means it already happened. It was already fulfilled. But the things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets. God showed these prophecies by the mouth of his prophets. Go ahead. That Christ should suffer, he had so fulfilled. That he was going to suffer, that he, right? You with me? Go ahead. You with me? I'm with you. Repent, he therefore, and be converted. Now he's telling us to repent. Hold Now he's telling us to repent. And that's the new covenant right there. Hold on, hold on. You're jumping the gun. I'm not jumping the gun. We're just on the fact that it has not been fulfilled or not. So that right there has already said that it's been fulfilled. Right, and he's saying repent. That was my part. So if you say repent, it's fulfilled. Right. So he's right. so he's now after he said that, he said repent. Why would he say that right after he says that? Because we're still going to need to repent for the end of days. Because now we want to repent under a new covenant. Back then it was repent. If you do wrong, you want to just drop dead. But that was the Old Testament. And that's why he. That's why the Christ came and fulfilled, as we just heard, and we mm -hmm. just read in Acts, has already fulfilled the fulfilled. And now we repent, and that's why we're now we're saved under grace through under, under grace through faith. Okay, that is the. Mystery. I'm with you, brother. We're gonna we're gonna read some more scriptures, and these scriptures gonna open it up. Go ahead and read it. Luke chapter 24, verse 44, and he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you, while I was yet with you. This is Christ Himself. While I was yet with you. Go ahead. Now all things must be fulfilled. Now all things must be fulfilled. And Go that ahead. Was before, okay, I'm listening. Yes, absolutely. Read it from the yeah, top, yeah. Huh? Matthew chapter 24, Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses. Correct. And, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. What was, exactly. Hold on. What was written in the Psalms concerning Christ? Hold on, hold on. That right there, all, uh, all that, that was good script, but all that he's talking about and they needed to fulfill, he was still alive when he was speaking that. So, of course, it hasn't been fulfilled yet. There were still things that he hasn't done yet that he will do after he has said that that needed to be fulfilled. He's just letting them know. That was him letting them know. There were still things that I must do to fulfill the law, which he 
stand with me for that I came to fulfill the law, not to abolish it, because I have to still walk the law. So I can't abolish it because I still have to walk the law. So that right there is saying that he did not finish what he came here to do yet. So there's still more things for him to come to the do. So it had to be fulfilled. That's what I'm with you, brother. Yeah. I'm with you. He got to. He still got to come back to deliver us. Deliverance. That is. That's the. That's through the salvation of him. Faith. Faith. By grace through faith. Okay. We're gonna read it again, and I want you to tell. I heard the scripture. Okay. So what? What is he talking about? That was written of him in Psalms. We're gonna read it again. I want you to explain that part because that part is very important. Where did we get the Psalms from? Because he didn't say anything about Psalms. We're gonna read it, King. I'm trying to get it out. Go ahead and read. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you. While while he was yet with us. This is when he was here. Go ahead and read. That all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses. What was written in the law of Moses. And that was for him to come through and do it. He is speaking that he is doing at the moment because he still was doing things at the moment. Mm -hmm. And the law of Moses said, okay, there's going to be one prophet that is greater than I. Greater than I. And that that is him saying, I'm that guy. I am that guy. That was written about. Exactly. That was written about back then. So that is, now bring it back to forward. That is him speaking right there. And in the prophets. And in the Psalms. Concerning me. So we're going to get in a read and see what he was actually talking about. Go ahead and read. Uh, 16. The book of Psalms, chapter 22, verse 16. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. So if this, I'm not mistaken, that's the Psalms of David, correct? That's what he was talking about in the New Testament, what brother. What does that have to do with Jesus? That's, that was all the Psalms, trials, and tribulations. That has nothing to do with brother, Jesus. Oh, wait. 